Hi, I'm Steve Ellert, and I want to tell you a story. Today's book is called Because, and it was written by Mo Williams, and all the pictures were drawn by Amber Wren. The people that printed it, and that's very important because if they didn't print it, we wouldn't be able to see it. The people that printed it uh, is a company called Hyperion Books for Children, and they're out of New York City. There's a lot of books that are made out of New York City, but that's the book right there, and it's called Because an Unexpected Note Can Change a Life, and that is very true. It is amazing how sometimes just one little thing can change an entire person's life. And that happened to me. Years and years ago, somebody did me a kindness years ago that put my life in a completely different direction than what I thought it would be. And so the things that you do the kindness that you do to people and the, uh, the good things you do for people, they can have effects that you have no idea that it could possibly happen. So here we go. Because a man named Ludwig, and they're talking about a man named Ludwig von Beethoven. Because a man named Ludwig wrote beautiful music, a man named Franz was inspired to create his own. And there's a man there's a picture of Ludwig von Beethoven. And he lived in the 1700s. And he was a you know he was a fascinating man. You know, the man wrote beautiful music, and you know, at the end of his life, he couldn't even hear. He was completely deaf, but he heard the music in his ear. And sometimes when the orchestras would play his music, he would put his head down on the stage and put his ear against the floor of the stage so he could hear the vibrations of the orchestra and tell whether or not they were playing the music the way he had envisioned them. So there was this man named Ludwig, and he wrote beautiful music. A man named Franz was inspired to create his own. And here's a picture of him. And his name actually was Franz Liszt. And Franz Liszt wrote a lot of Beautiful, beautiful music. Okay. But, and he was inspired by the things that Beethoven wrote. Well, because for many years later, people wanted to hear Franz's beautiful music, well, they formed an orchestra. And an orchestra is a group of people that play different instruments and... They all come together, and they play beautiful music. And, you know, it's it's kind of like us. You know, we, we all are different, and we all have uh, different things that we like to do and different uh, personalities and different strengths. You know, but you put us all together. And we can do some absolutely wonderful things. And that's what they're talking about here. All these people wrote different types or played different types of instruments. But you put them together in what's called an orchestra. And they played beautiful music. Well, here's one man that because he practiced all his life, he was asked to join, and he's playing an instrument called a violin. A violin is a small instrument that you 
put up against your cheek and you play it with a uh, what's called a bow and that's what he has th there he has a bow and you play it and it it just sounds absolutely wonderful okay so because a man had practiced since he was a kid he was asked to join the orchestra well then there was a woman that because she studied day and night she was also asked to play and she's playing here something that looks like drums but they're not really drums. They're called timpani. But you you pound on them like a drum. Okay. Well, then there were a lot of other people. It's just because many other people loved and practiced their instruments. There were enough musicians to make an orchestra. And here's a whole group of people here. Uh, this one, she's playing what's called a bassoon. This woman, she's playing something that's called a cello. It looks like a violin, but it's bigger, and so it sounds deeper, okay? If a cello, you know, you could say it sounds like your mama. Well, a cello would sound like your dad. It's deeper, and it, ta and it plays deeper notes. And it's very rich and uh, very, very beautiful. <coughs> and because many others loved and practiced their instruments, they also were asked to join the orchestra. Now here, you have what's called a French horn. And a French horn is very difficult to play. And, but it makes the most beautiful sound <coughs> if you know how to play it, it makes the most beautiful sound you ever heard. Very mellow, very soothing. And then this woman here, okay, she's playing a flute. A flute is very high, you know, and it, it sounds just like a bird. And it is just an absolutely beautiful sound. <coughs> And these people, they practice day and night, day and night. And so the instruments that they played, they just all sounded absolutely beautiful. Okay. Well, then here they had, because somebody had created a poster about Franz Liszt's music, sold tickets. This person, you know, she didn't play music, but she did what was called graphic arts. She gave a message through pictures. Okay. And people loved her pictures so much that they decided to buy tickets to hear the orchestra play their music. Okay. Because someone created a poster about Franz's music tickets were sold. Because the train conductor stopped the train at the ground concert hall, the orchestra conductor arrived. Okay. The orchestra conductor, he's the person that's kind of the leader of the, con, uh, of the orchestra. He tells them when to start and when to stop, how fast to play, and what notes to play with with real feeling, okay? And he's kind of like the supervisor of the orchestra because without, uh, without a conductor, then you just have a lot of noise, okay? But the conductor had to get to the orchestra and to get there, he had to use a train or a subway. And he relied on the conductor to get him there. Every one of us depends on somebody else. We don't get anywhere on our own. Well, somebody else that's very important 
was the librarian. Because the orchestra librarian had copies of the score, the orchestra rehearsed. Okay, well there, there's the orchestra and the librarian is passing out the music. And here, you know, they're starting to play. Okay. Orchestras can sound absolutely wonderful, but if they don't play the same notes at the same time, it really doesn't sound very good. Okay. But because of the librarian, they all had the right music and they all played the right thing at the right time. Well, next, because the workers checked the lights and the seats and swept the floor, the ground hall was ready. And that's them doing all the checking. Okay. Yeah. You can have the best orchestra and the best music in the world, but if you're in the dark, it's really kind of hard to appreciate it. And you really don't want to be in a place that's dirty and it's got a lot of trash and popcorn and different things. And that's what they did. All right, the workers made sure all of that was cleaned up so it looked really nice and really pretty for all the people that were going to be there. Yeah. Well, because the time had come, the ushers had opened the doors, and these are the ushers. The ushers are the people that actually brought the people into the hall and to the right seats. If it weren't for the ushers, you know, people may not sit in the right seats, and there could be a lot of confusion. People trying to find a place to sit down. Well, the ushers make sure that everybody is sitting in the right place and uh, makes it a lot easier to enjoy and a lot faster for everyone to find their seats and find a place to sit down and enjoy the orchestra. Well, here, somebody caught a cold. Well, because they caught a cold, somebody had an extra ticket for somebody very special. Because, you know, if you're if you have a cold, you really don't want to get out and maybe give other people the cold. So he decided to stay home. And his wife, his aunt, had an extra ticket. So she decided she was going to take someone special. <coughs> this is because the usher helped the aunt and her special guest, they found their seats. And that's a lot of what an usher does. You know, I've been an usher. And my job has been to make sure everybody gets seated where they need to sit and uh, make sure they're comfortable and they find where they need to be. Because if, if it wasn't for the ushers, you know, people may be going all over the place trying to find the right place to sit. <coughs> and cause a lot of confusion and a lot of noise, and you really can't hear the orchestra. Okay. Well, because everyone was there to hear beautiful music, it was quiet. You know, sometimes when you go to a movie and it's getting ready to start, you know, your parents will tell you to be quiet because you want to hear everything. Well, that's what happened here, you know. You're getting ready to hear some beautiful music and you want everybody to be quiet so that everyone can hear the music. <coughs> well, look at that. There's the whole orchestra. The whole orchestra together. And there, ha there are different uh, parts in the orchestra. You know, you have violins here and cellos here. And you have the timpani or the drums back there. Yeah, every piece is in its own place. And they're all there for a reason because that's the best place that you can hear them. <coughs> well, in row C, seat 14, 
sat the girl with the uncle's ticket. Remember, the uncle was sick, so he couldn't go. And so the aunt had an extra ticket to take someone special, and that was their niece. And so that's where they sat, in row C, seat 14. Now, where do you think row C would be? Okay. Well, row A is in the very front, right in front of the orchestra. So row B would be the row behind A. It would be the next row. <coughs> so where would row C be? You have A, then B, then C. All right, C would be the third row. But that's really a pretty good row. It's still really close to the, to the orchestra. And there she sat. She was in row C, seat 14. And she sat with the seat that was for her uncle. Okay. Well, she heard the beautiful music written by a man named Franz. Franz Liszt, as we know. And it changed her. And music has ways of changing people. Music has a way of changing people that nothing else can. Sometimes you can talk and talk and talk and talk, but when you hear music, it's something just completely different. And in this case, the girl was changed. Okay. From that moment on, the girl learned everything she could about music. And that's her there. You know, she's sitting there. She's doing her own orchestra. She's got an orchestra of all her favorite stuffed animals. Of unicorns and lions and a bus and pigs and a bunny and a robot, you know. But they were her orchestra. Yeah. Well, she also started to write music. And she got on the piano when she started to play out the tunes on the piano that she had composed or she had written. Okay. Because like Franz, the young woman had something to share. Over time, the woman became very good because she worked very hard. And that's her there, okay? It's, I don't know if you can tell it, but that woman up there, she's now the conductor of the orchestra. She worked very hard to get there. But because she was so good at what she did, that they made her the conductor. And on one night, her music was discovered because she was very good, but also she was very lucky. You know, sometimes in life, you do have to have a certain amount of luck. And sometimes God opens doors for you that you thought were closed, but he gives you opportunities to do things you may never have thought you would have had before. Well, then she was invited to perform her music and it was at the Grand Concert Hall. And it was because so many people wanted to hear it. And there, there she is in the Grand Hall. And you can see there are a lot of people standing or sitting there wanting to hear her music. While her composition was dedicated to the uncle in Row C, Section 14, why was her uncle there? You know, why did she dedicate it to her uncle? Because it was his ticket that brought her there. If it wasn't for him being sick, she would not have had the ticket. She would not have fallen in love with music. She wouldn't have studied hard. And she wouldn't have become a conductor. And because of that, Someone else was changed. And you know, that was the woman, the conductor. You know, there is a story about a woman, Elsa Stark. 
She is a conductor. She is the first conductor to conduct a symphony in Carnegie Hall, which is a big place in New York City. And she fell in love with music, just like this little girl had. And she went on and she studied hard and she learned about music and she learned to play different things. And she became a conductor and she eventually conducted an orchestra at Carnegie Hall, which people consider is the most uh, important thing, the best thing that you can do when you're a conductor. But it was because of all the different things that went before her, you know, the uh, Beethoven, who composed music, and Franz Liszt, who was inspired by him, and all the girls' uh, aunts and uncles that were inspired by them, and because she got a ticket, you know, because of all those things, she became a conductor too, just like this woman that conducted the orchestra at Carnegie Hall. So I think the moral to this is you want to do the best you can. And if you do study hard and really care about what you're doing, there's no limit to the things that you can do. So this is Steve Elwer. I hope that you enjoyed this story and we'll be having more stories later. Goodbye.